I have been living a lie. I told you all that the V13 is capable of 55 miles per hour, but as some of you may have noticed, I had actually never taken the wheel up to its maximum speed as part of my review. Have I gotten soft and lazy? That's rude, don't answer that. <laughs> But we will address this shameful shortfall this week by attempting to get the V13 up to its maximum speed of 55 miles per hour. Are you ready to send you back to the future? Rodendro! And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Tell the Google algorithm that you want EUC content to spread far and why. And a shameless plug for my own accessory shop, MOSFET.com. We're actually getting the Sherman S version of the E-Ride pedal in this week and they're already half sold out. So order yours before they're all gone. First of all, let me just say that I don't actually consider myself to be a very fast rider. I'm actually pretty conservative when it comes to pushing speed on an electric unicycle. I don't ride the 80% voltage warning beep on the old Gotway wheels. And even on older 84 volt wheels like my Motion V11, I stay respectfully clear of their relatively conservative tilt back speed. It is just not worth the risk of testing boundary when the cause of failure, i.e. cutout, is so very high. By the way, if you aren't familiar with electric unicycles, allow me to explain. As in all self-balancing vehicle and EUC maintain balance by moving in the direction of your lean so as to kind of catch you. And the more you lean, the faster it will have to accelerate in order to maintain balance. And at some point, the electrical current required to maintain acceleration and speed exceed what the system can actually handle. The whole thing shuts down and you crash and burn. Both the 80% warning beep from the Go Gotway wheels as well as tilt back on the Emotion and Kingsong model serve to warn you against this limit. And that last 20 to 30% safety margin is what everyone commonly refer to as headroom. And the thing that is uniquely different about the Emotion V13 is that despite its very impressive specification, it also has the most amount of headroom as compared to any other high performance electric unicycle on the market. Which means that for mere mortals like you or I, if we wanted to challenge the top speed of electric unicycle, then this is the wheel you get to do it. And again, I get that from the outside looking in for those of you who rides a 300cc plus motorcycle, 55 miles per hour is child's play. You can practically do that kind of speed in your sleep. And I totally get it since I used to ride a 500cc bike also, but trust me, an electric unicycle with just a single wheel between you and the meat grinder that is payment, it is an entirely different experience to be going that fast. Then there is the matter of where we are, which is right smack dab in the middle of New York City. And some of the densest, most congested urban environment you'll find anywhere in the world. So it's not exactly easy to find enough room to get a wheel up to 55 miles per hour without getting on a highway, which is something that I'm not quite willing to do just yet either on a unicycle for obvious reasons. Matter of fact, for some perspective, the average width of a New York City block you see here is about 264 feet, which means that you get five blocks to the mile and at 55 miles per hour, you'll be flying past 20 blocks every minute. That is quite sound speed. Now I do know a few places where there's enough room for this kind of speed and this is one of them the Red Hook Cruise and Ferry Terminal. Especially this part where we have a long straightaway down a long aisle of truck terminal. It's about a thousand feet or three football field long before you hit the turn at the end. And this is also where the straightaway for the Formula E racetrack is located. Now if a Formula E race car can hit 200 miles per hour before it runs out of track at the end of this long straightaway, then that should be enough room for us to hit 55 miles per hour on the Emotion V13. Which is also why we end up running the New York City V13 demo here. It feels like a Malta Pro but just with more torque. 
and it's a little more nimble. It feels a lot more torquey. Like, I, it feels a lot easier to like mm -hmm. accelerate. The Monster Pro, it did not want to move. What happened? You almost dropped it? Oh, coming off. <laughs> Is this too much wheel for you? It's a lot. It's definitely a lot. Uh -huh. It's fun to ride. Like, it doesn't feel this big underneath you. These pedals are way too small, at least for my taste. Like you see, like the I'm mounted. My, like one third of the feet small. is off yeah. already. That's your feet the is too big. That's the problem. No, the you should have small, small dainty feet. No, I'm, I'm a size nine. That's already on the way smaller side of my height. This is a placeholder. That's not even the stock pedal. So the stock pedals are not grippy enough at all. Yes, and you can buy pedal at my shop. <laughs> the wheel is very stable. Like it's actually way more coverable than you imagine, especially on Obi. Like, it, like yeah, you take an effort to initiate the carve, but you don't worry about the dip because it's it, like it's well balanced. I would say. One thing doesn't want to stop. In my opinion. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you gotta really pull on it. So I can use my whole body weight to lean back. I think it'd be all right. And it, I mean, I can feel the power. I don't have to do anything. I just sort of like no, push my toes down, down and it takes off. You're on the Sherman S. Yeah. How does it compare? Your brand new Sherman S that you just dropped four thousand dollar on. <laughs> I've only ridden a Sherman. Yeah. I've ridden the OG Sherman, the Maximus, and then this feels more nimble in the city. Being able to duck out of between people and all that, and the, the suspension is way more plush on this. You got that thing going. Yeah, yeah, this thing takes off, man. It takes off. It feels good. Like I like the responsiveness and everything. It's nice. It's just um, I gotta get used to the. I don't, I don't even like. I mean, I can just feel the stableness of the wheel and everything, but. I like the, the, the motor responsiveness, seriously, it feels great. It's just braking though, it's like a whole, <laughs> whole body exercise. Yes. Like. What? I actually never got to that point, but what point does the wheel usually How much was the mile? That's what I said. Right? I hear love. I said the yeah, same thing. Fun. Did I just cause you another $4,000 down? Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend and I was like, come to the demo. He's like, nope. nope. I know I'm going to get it. So. It's good. <laughs> it's, it's not. Like, it's very this, stable. This so That's not right. Well, because I know I won't, it won't cut out, right? <laughs> no. I was banking on that. Like, no, you know, man. I watched your video. I was like, oh, okay. I'm safe. But see, this is, this is the thing. Like, he is in love with it because he has the weight to crank it right now. The only reason that none of us is feeling what he's feeling is because the soft. So if they tune it, make it more aggressive, like everybody be like, oh, this thing is going to go. Two, you're just getting started. Come on. You need a big one, a small one, a medium sized one. Exactly. Learn from Da, the man with like, how many wheels do you have right now? Only four right now. Four Only right four, now? is it? About to be five, sounds like. Not <laughs> 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 good. You gonna get an emotion wheel? <laughs> oh no, that's, that's like betrayal, man. I don't know about that. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, let's move on before I cause any more irresponsible financial decisions and let's talk instead about other type of risky behaviors like trying to hit speed limits on a unicycle. But before we get to the actual attempt, there are some preparation we'll have to make first. First by tuning the firmware to make it a little bit easier for me to push this wheel. In general, I didn't really like the acceleration or braking assist that's currently in the firmware since I think the motion that it induces is a little bit too abrupt since the beta firmware currently is still a little bit reluctant to let you access the very top end of this wheel. I really need every single bit of help I can get. But for acceleration assist, I'm gonna start with 50% and maybe crank it up to 100 if I really need it. What this will do is that it will tilt the wheel a little bit forward when you're accelerating. Hopefully this would compensate for the slight tilt back. The wheel starts at around 50 miles per hour. Then we have protection. With motorcycle speed, we will need proper moto protective gear. I'll be wearing my old Dainese touring jacket and I'll be wearing my asterisk knee brace underneath my pants. And finally, this is the helmet I've been wearing the POC Arctic Spin and it's time to step up to a real motorcycle helmet and be wearing the Shark Evo Line GT. Don't worry, there is a chin bar proper. As a matter of fact, this helmet is one of the few that is actually DLT approved both in the open and closed position. Love this helmet except it gives me chipmunk cheeks. <laughs> 
and make me talk funny. And finally, I swapped the North pad I was using with these pads from e since They stick a little bit better and provide a bit more mass for me to push against since I would be doing a whole lot of pushing. And with that, we're finally ready to go. So this is really my last opportunity to push the V13 to its very limit because tomorrow I'm going to be sending it onward to the black cobra so that would be it for my time with this wheel Ooh, oh that drop is still a little bit harsh you never have to worry about taking the left lane knowing that you have no issues with keeping up all right so we're heading out to red hook we should be able to get some decent speed on the way there it's a nice long stretch all the way over so the one downside is that uh the red hook track is about five miles away which means that by the time i arrive i'm not going to be at 100 percent the good thing with the v13 is that there seems to be very little reduction in top speed even after the battery runs down a little bit as a matter of fact when i got it down to 30 percent the other day um, it's still able to do uh, a top speed 47 which is pretty dang good but there are other places where i can go fast one of my favorite spot is of course the cutout tunnel what's up Whew. it's a nice day everyone is out riding taking my time there's some nice folks out on the ride so as the wheels get faster and faster, honestly, each time when I do these performance tests, it's always a little bit nerve wracking <laughs> because the speed is significant and you always worry about whether or not something's going to go wrong. Especially if you're riding the streets, things are a little bit unpredictable. It's a mixture of excitement and fear, like I have mentioned before, especially on these extreme wheels because you really want to push in to see how far they can go. That's the whole point. And it's a privilege to be able to get these demo wheel early before everyone else does. You want to take advantage of the opportunity and pull the, the most out of the wheel as much as you can. Riding an electric unicycle really is a sport. It's not just like any other um, personal electric vehicle. I'm not saying that it doesn't take any physical prowess to ride a bicycle because that's certainly a workout even the electrical assisted one but still like there's nothing like an electric unicycle in the knee for you to maintain balance and control of the wheel especially at high speed as much as i am <laughs> intimidated by the prospect of having to push the limit on this wheel i gotta say the v13 has been more than <laughs> adequate in making sure that it is a stable safe and controllable ride even the sherman s that wheel is you know i just got a production unit of it and it's crazy fast that wheel can go up to 55 no issues but it requires nervous steel and the willingness to take a fall if you have to i saw the 55 miles per hour ride that don't oh here's a speed section this is a nice straightaway run. I can usually try to at least get up to 45. I actually met her when I was in San Diego earlier last year. She just started learning how to ride an EUC at the time. It was incredible. She was very, a little bit wobbly on her Sherman at the time. Definitely tell she is an experienced motorcycle rider. And yeah, there's too much traffic. I'm not going to be able to get speed. I can feel the pushback a little bit. This is the thing I don't like. You know, like 41 is like not a lot of speed. Even with acceleration assist, I still feel the wheel like subtly kind of push back a little bit. I understand that emotion is very safety oriented. And as a result, they are reluctant to allow people to speed as much as they want. As the wheel tilt back, it also moves the speed pad that you have set up further back and any kind of changing orientation makes it difficult not only push against them but i also use touching the speed pad as a mean to stabilize so when they're like kind of further back i'm forced to actually widen my stance that changing stance make me 
less stable. There's a bike lane, but there's nobody here. So hopefully they don't mind if I get a little bit of speed going. I first discovered this Red Hook Spock when I came here a few years ago to see the Formula E race. They had this urban track layout. Um, it was amazing to see. 1.2 miles altogether, not terribly long. The Formula E car is absolutely incredible. Like the pinnacle of electrical performances. The top speed those cars is able to achieve were something around like 250 miles per hour. And like you never really see 250 miles per hour in person. And when you do, it's absolutely mind blowing to see something physical moving at that kind of speed. So here's where things opens up a good bit. Tesla dealership right here, who <laughs> conveniently use the same location to store their stuff. Cars, we're almost there. See, this is the perfect spot. Even in condition like this, I'm always thinking, you know, if you're really trying to hit high speed here, you know, if someone were to creep in, they, they, they don't expect you to be riding as fast as all right here we go we are here all right let's do a quick run and see how we do 30 36 40 41 oh That is scary. They also use the spot to teach people how to drive a truck. I think this guy is backing up. So if they're all moving around, this may make it a little bit trickier. Now I'm thinking maybe I should have done this at the cutout tunnel because the problem here is that although you have lots of room, it also gets a little bit windy. The last thing you want when you're speeding is to uh, get a crosswind that may blow you over. That condition actually feels a little bit sketchy. We'll see. All right, here we go. <laughs> this is not a good place to do it. The wind is weirding me out. Let's do a few more runs, but um, I'm having second thought. The condition is super important. The, the cutout tunnel is the perfect place because it's a tunnel and you never get crosswind. It just goes in one single direction. On the street, it's actually not too bad because in New York, there's tall building on both sides of you. So there's not a lot of crosswind going on. Uh, unfortunately, I think this spot is probably a little bit sketchy. So let's try this again. can't do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's too much gross wind here. Oh my god, it is scary as hell. No. I'm doing even worse now. It's not as glamorous as it's seeing the video, man. I'm telling you. This is the hard code fact behind <laughs> at least my video. Even the smallest variation in a parameter on even row or what have you creates like huge like problems. <laughs> For Dawn out in the West Coast, uh, not saying that it's an easy task, but she certainly have quite a bit more room to do it. And I also noticed that when Kuji pushed the speed, uh, he did it in the middle of the night when there's nobody around. My backup plan is to go to my all-time favorite, the cutout tunnel, and try to see if I can hit higher speed there. No promises about 55. Properly shamed, I hit back to the city with tails between my legs, but at least I was able to find a few stretch of open roads on the way back to push the speed a bit more. Get around this guy. <sighs> that was our opportunity to get some speed. He got in my way. Cars, unbelievable. Always blocking you. <laughs> 
Good thing that I got just about the fastest way to get around in the city, and 10 minutes later, I'm back on 1st Avenue. The streets like this, man. See, right here. 40. Uh, you could get a surprising amount of speed, I gotta say. People do drive fast when there's not a lot of traffic. Which is why, again, having this kind of headroom is super helpful because yes, you can hit 45 miles per hour, but at that point, your headroom is like razor thin. And all it takes is one single bump. When you hit a bump, you get a spike. The wheel gotta roll up, more resistance, and that is oftentimes people cut out. This, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you hit as many bump as you like. Uh, I see an opening. And finally, the first avenue underpass. Let's do it. Or the cutout tunnel. <laughs> We're entering the tunnel at 35. 45. 47. 48. 49. 50. My gosh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it is a scary, scary thing, man. <laughs> if you want to get your adrenaline go going, oh my god. And obviously, we ain't gonna stop with just a single run. All right, let's go. 41 But the V13 wasn't really cooperating and as the day wind to an end, it's pretty clear that I wasn't going to hit 55 miles per hour after all. But despite my failure, I have little doubt that given enough time and distance, the V13 is certainly capable of it. However, by capping torque and acceleration, which is another way rider can increase traction and control at speed, the firmware as is does make it difficult and impractical in anything short of perfect conditions. And whether or not you see that as a reasonable safety precaution or an overbearing limitation on fun is all a matter of perspective. But maybe that argument is all really pointless anyway since an electric unicycle isn't really meant for highway speed even if it is capable of it. But whichever side of the fence you are on, few can deny how far we have come in such little time. And although I'm still waiting for a 60 miles per hour capable EUC, maybe that wait won't be long. <laughs> Have I not pushed far enough? Or am I reckless riding way gonna get us all banned, man? Well, give me a piece of your mind in the comment section below. And you know what? Once again, I rebel on too low and somehow managed to waste another 25 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the link in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheel is to grow as a community. So tell your friend teaching how to ride and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank you.